I'm Eric Madison. I'm professor of medicine at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I'm a clinician scientist there, and I have a particular interest in lung diseases in the rheumatic diseases. We know that in rheumatoid arthritis, in lupus, in scleroderma, in Sjogren's syndrome, in sarcoidosis, that the lung disease is often the determinant of the patient outcome. What we've really underappreciated is the contribution of the lung disease to the morbidity and mortality of these diseases. And so in an effort to understand this better, we've undertaken a number of studies that look at the progression of decline in pulmonary function, for example, in rheumatoid arthritis, something that heretofore hasn't been studied in these patients over long periods of time. In rheumatoid arthritis, about 10% or so of patients have significant lung disease, and that lung disease, interstitial lung disease, increases the mortality or the death experience, the chances of dying at any given point by threefold through the disease career. What we don't know is what kind of lung diseases are more likely to increase this risk of dying, and so what we have investigated are the two major forms of interstitial lung disease, which are called NSIP, or nonspecific interstitial pneumonitis, and UIP, usual interstitial pneumonitis. What we have found is that UIP is more common in rheumatoid arthritis, but the impact of UIP on long-term mortality in rheumatoid arthritis is not different from NSIP, which is in contrast to idiopathic interstitial lung disease. We've also learned that there is a subset of patients who have rapidly progressive disease. These patients tend to be patients who are male, who are smokers, and who have a sharp decline in their DLCO, a measure of, of oxygenation and carbon monoxide exchange, and in their FEC, or force vital capacity, which is a measure of lung volume, early on in the disease course. So we're now starting to be able to identify who these patients are. Identifying this is really important to understanding which patients we need to focus on treatment for in the future as we develop better therapies for managing this part of the disease of rheumatoid arthritis. In sarcoidosis, much the same is true as well, and the extent of lung disease very much affects the mortality experience of patients with sarcoidosis. But we know it's not just the lung disease that affects mortality and morbidity in, in sarcoidosis. We've traditionally connected sarcoidosis with lung disease, but we have found out now that patients who have sarcoidosis, like patients with other rheumatic diseases, have more cardiovascular disease. Their risk of developing cardiovascular disease is about twofold compared to people who don't have sarcoidosis. Their risk of developing osteoporosis and osteoporotic fractures is increased, and their risk of developing peripheral vascular disease is also markedly increased. So these are things that really haven't been understood in populations of patients with sarcoidosis, but things that providers who take care of these patients need now to pay more attention to, to understand, in order to better manage these conditions. We know that patients with rheumatoid arthritis, as patients with other rheumatic diseases, are at higher risk for cardiovascular diseases. We know that traditional risk factors for cardiovascular disease, such as smoking, such as hypertension, obesity, and hyperlipidemia, are factors that affect patients with rheumatoid arthritis, just as they affect people who don't have rheumatoid arthritis. Above and beyond that, however, patients with rheumatoid arthritis are also at higher risk of cardiovascular disease simply based on the fact that they have rheumatoid arthritis, probably because of the inflammatory component of the disease. This is little recognized and is something that we are working to build into risk assessment for cardiovascular diseases among our patients who have rheumatic disease. Traditionally, what we have done is to assess for risk factors like smoking, obesity, and so on, as I have mentioned. But now what we're trying to do is to further identify these patients for interventions. One thing that has become really clear through our population-based studies is that patients with rheumatoid arthritis don't even receive statin therapies where they should be receiving them. So 50% of patients with rheumatoid arthritis who should be on a statin 
for managing their hyperlipidemia are not on statin therapy. Further, the fact that the disease, rheumatoid arthritis, and the inflammatory condition that affects the joints also affects blood vessels and affects coronary arteries is a contributor towards this risk for cardiovascular disease means that we need to develop better risk assessment tools and the finding that we have so far is that the risk assessment tools available, the Framingham risk assessment tool, or even the multiplication factor that EULAR uses, 1.5 times Framingham after 10 years of disease, they are inadequate for predicting cardiovascular disease risk in these patients. So we're working very hard to find better assessment algorithms and better assessment tools so that we can identify these patients.